There you go. There we go. All right. So today is Monday, 18 of September, 2017. Uh, and this is the IPFS All Hands. Um, so the recording is started. And if you have anything that you would like to, to chat about or to demo during this call, please add it to the notes. Uh, we have the agenda. Just add another, another row. So the first point of the agenda is about next week call. And that's yeah. Matt. Yeah. So, the, so for the next two weeks, the protocol labs people are going to be meeting in person. And so uh, in the past, we have still done the weekly call. Uh, we just did a sort of everyone sitting with one big camera. Um, and so I'm wondering whether we should do that. Because especially since it, usually that was just one week, now it's two, two weeks in a row that we will all be uh, all together. Um, so should we do that or should we just postpone these calls? Can I, can I ask a question? So there is two weeks in a row and then right afterwards, the next week is the, the retreat in, in Crete? That's, oh, that is next week. Okay, yeah. Oh, all right, so there is, hold on, no, the retreat in Crete, I think it's in two weeks, October 1 to 8, right? That's the second week. Okay, so you mean starting next week? Okay, cool. So the, the protocol labs, People will be all meeting together next week. They're, they're, and then also the following week will be all together. And some additional people will be joining us for that. Time. So either way, more than half of the people who are currently on this call will all be in one place. Well, actually not even half. It's less than half if you went by who's in, on the call right now. So how should we allow that to impact the scheduling of this call? That's the question. David, do you have thoughts? You were, I think you were playing. So in terms of like hardware, we actually are coming better prepared for this, this time because we are going to have a better camera and better microphones. So the exp like in the past when a lot of people got together. We tried to do this call, but like the experience was never great because the video was not great, the audio was not great, but this time we are getting prepared. It might, like in unless there is topics for next week's agenda, it might not be useful to have this call, but it might be useful to prepare a call for the week after, so the, for the second week, uh, where we give a little bit more notice and we invite people to tell us about the projects that they are doing with IPFS. Because that will also help us uh, learn something, like what are the needs from the community? What are the, the, the current pain points? What are the blockers? And, and also like just have a lot of fun on like having a very big call with a lot of people coming and like showing a demo and, and hanging out. And, and, and yeah, like, we can prepare that. Uh, again, this is just an idea. <laughs> like, uh, that we're just talking about this right now. Uh, but if people like that idea, we, we can organize something. So, so that proposal would be cancel next week's call, but then do a big planned call the following week? Yeah. A big planned call. I, that works for me. Um, does anyone dislike that idea? Okay. Well, then let's assume let's assume that's what we're gonna do. I'll, I'll like make a GitHub issue for it, and we'll officially do it. But yeah. So that's that agenda item. Thank you. Cool. Um, I forgot before to make sure that someone was taking notes. Uh, and Jeremy, I think, is supposed to do that. So if we just add a note about the creation of the GitHub issue to further discuss it. So, do we take the notes between the last two comment things? So we tend to put them down at the bottom, like under B, yeah, below demos.
all at once. But, but we also made a decision that we will probably cancel next week's call. And then the following week, we'll have a big planned call where we invite lots of people to participate and talk about the Ooh. Okay, moving on, uh, we have a new Go IPFS release from Jeremy. Yeah, so we got the um, 0411 uh, release candidate out. There's a lot of huge things in this, so definitely go give it a shot. Um, a lot of the networking code has been reworked. And it kind of didn't make it into the change logs. I'm trying to figure out how best to put that in there because it's mostly like the PR. So I pulled the change log from pull request titles and all the pull request titles for the libp to p fixes were GX update libp to p thing. So uh, trying to improve that a bit. But yeah, there's a lot of new stuff, a lot of, a lot of fixes, uh, some new features like circuit relays and um, more configurable data store stuff and I, I wrote up a big change log it's the most writing i've done in a long time so give that a read try it out let me know if things break and yeah david um i just wanted to make sure i understand so the version the repo version number changed not because there was a breaking change but because features were added Namely, the new. No, there, there was a breaking change in the data store configuration field. Um, okay. Yeah. The configuration field, but like the the repo, the the structure of the repo and the names of the files. Mm -hmm. Those are, are those are all the same. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, yeah. The configuration has changed. Got it. C can you point me to? that configuration change or like just a signature? Yeah, um, check the configuration docs. Got it. Uh, I've been keeping those up to date. Okay, I will. I'll post it in the thing. Where is your big, where's the big write-up you made? Um, which big write-up, the change log one? Y yeah. Uh, it's in the change log. This was the most ready you've done in a long time. Was that in the change log? That's in the change log, yeah. Right. I put a link to the change log in the in the shots here in Zoom. Oh. Very good. Very good. Okay. And um, then we kind of run out of agenda items to, to talk about. Anyone else have something they, they would like to chat about? Yes, Brennan. I'm sorry, just a quick follow-up. Uh, Jeremy, is there a, like a mega issue thread you'd like to follow, see stuff filed on for our uh, 4.11? Or should we just file specifically like new issues surrounding it? Yeah, just go ahead and file new issues whenever they come up. Um, and make sure you note that it happened in 4.11 RC1. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I've the the whole the we've tried like a mega thread before and things get kind of like yeah. So as soon as much as I didn't know the protocol, wanted to make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, we've already got six hundred and something issues. Might as well have seven hundred. Totally. <laughs> um, well, congrats on the release. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, quick update on server. Uh, interrupt testing. So was able to get some of those interrupt uh, tests in, specifically go to JS over both JS and, and Go Relays. Um, also got in a test for the browser. It's just one. It's browser to browser over Relay. Um, it, it is one of the relays that's, uh, or one of the nodes that gets started by uh, the gulp when you run the tests. And that one is a JS relay, uh, but, and I'm not sure if I should be adding a Go test for that as well. I wasn't set up there, but um, anyways, it works. We have, we have some, some coverage for, for interoperability and that seems to be working fine. Uh, all the, the issues that were found 
during either manual testing or running the automated tests are fixed. Uh, everything is pretty much ready to be reviewed. Um, I guess there's going to be some back and forth on that, but that is that's where things are right now. Uh, Vid, if you if you want to add something or maybe if you have any questions for anyone, I have a quick question. So, sure. awesome work on the interrupt tests. Um, I know you have been testing to the latest Go IPFS, the zero four eleven, uh, because of sequence relay. Uh, I remember that there was some combinations of interop that were not fully working because it worked from JS to JS to Go and I from JS to Go to Go, but not from JS to Go to JS, right? There was like some some combination. No, they're they're all working. Uh, oh, awesome. it, those were those were a couple of issues that we uh, that we found and Steven and Bizo uh, helped me identify where the issues were and we, we were able to to get this out then. And it's all working. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yep. That's, that's yep. awesome news. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Uh, Jeremy, when are you thinking on releasing zero? Like, is it that this week? Oh, yeah. It'll be this week. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I just got the RC out, uh, what, yesterday, day before yesterday. So give it a couple of days of people poking it for actually releasing. Okay. Uh, Steven, Steven, you are in a very windy place, it seems. Yes. <laughs> Might want to close the windows. <laughs> uh, one thing I've noticed is that some of the uh, interrupt tests fail on timeouts, specifically the get directory ones. Uh, does anyone know what's going on there? The get directory fail on timeouts? Um, this, you are saying like we on master or with the latest YPFS? Uh, you are muted again somehow. Uh, now it's Jeremy that's muted. I'll get uh, some uh, context expired errors and then the, the connection refused errors. This with, just happens randomly, not always. With 0410 or 0411? 0411. Okay, so I haven't tested that. Like the, I always test with the latest release, release. So I haven't seen those errors. Can you like open an issue so that I can look at it? I can't reproduce them reliably, but I'll try to reproduce them better. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like if you can reproduce them again, them again, and like just copy paste, and make sure that like we can look at it. But like if they are failing, it means it's a regression on four eleven. Or something that there is now a mismatch. Like it, it might not it looks be a regression. Like it might be a testing error. That's what I was asking if it's a known issue. Well, no. Like tests. Like I, I never saw those tests fail. Uh, okay. In the last couple of releases of JSPFS. Okay. Are they failing constantly, or or is it just no, just occasionally? Yeah. I've I've seen I've seen a few cases where things would time out for whatever reason, but. It was pretty random as well. Also with 4.11, right? Because you have been testing circuit. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so I actually, I forgot to tell to say this, but some of the tests, and this is probably my environment because I got a whole bunch of things linked. Uh, but some of these tests, they're failing where when they run as part of the whole suite. And when I run them uh, isolated, they, they, they work fine. But when they run in the, as part of the, the, the whole test run, um, various, uh, a lot of them do, do fail um, in different places. Like the, the, some of the interface tests are, fa are failing, but I'm, I'm guessing and I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it's, it's probably my setup, something with my link modules or something like that. Because if I run them separately, uh, isolated, they do work. So I, well, it's been like, yeah. <laughs> my guess there, if, I, if they run isolated, and they don't run as a test suite, it means the setup and teardown are colliding, like clashing with each other. And, and that's because you're seeing them fail. Like you are right. like trying to spawn more nodes with the same config values and they are, the other ones are still there. Yeah, yeah I, I, I thought about that. I checked and I, I think I, I made sure that everything was using like creep repo and random stuff all, all over. Um, mm -hmm. 
but I, I'm, I'll, I'll make sure again. It might be something like of that nature. I also thought that. So, yeah, it, it's a separate issue though. Like, so Stephen is saying that like on yes. four eleven, the interrupt for getting files and uh, and sending files sometimes fails. You are saying that like the circuit tests that are a new test suite yeah, yeah. are failing yeah. when they are run all together. But yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, they're, so, they're separate issues. No? Sorry for the confusion. Yeah, well, let's try to make sure we understand what's going on, Stephen, before releasing 4.11, because it would suck if just IPFS nodes stop like being able to fetch things from GoIPFS once 4.11 goes into the gateways and gets deployed everywhere. 4.11 is already on the gateways. Oh, really? Uh, okay. It, it appears to actually be working most of the time, um, but the that's why I think it may be an issue with the tests where the test is okay. Okay, I'll, I'll run them also today. Okay. Let's make sure I understand what's going on. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, on any of this very sensitive stuff, like interrupt, anything that signals any problem, like just uh, um, sound the alarm because like you want to always make sure like interrupt keeps working. Uh, those are like priority P0 always. Uh, and like if we can, it might be a problem with tests, it might be a problem with uh, whatever. We want to make sure that like we understand what's going on and that we have quarts so that we don't get caught off guard in the future. All right. Hmm. Does anyone have any other agenda items before we move on to demos? Does not seem so. All right. Does anyone have any demos? Today? Seems like you have one. I do have one. <laughs> Just trying to get people to remember if they have. <laughs> uh, okay, so I can go go first. I mostly these days I've been dealing with infrastructure stuff, and I got a bit bored, so I picked up a, a old demo I did uh, maybe half a year ago or something like that. Uh, and now with the new performance enhancements of uh, JS IPFS and lib P2P in general, uh, plus using streams instead I managed to get something that worked kind of I am unsure how this is gonna work with a lot of people uh, but we can try if you click on the link in the zoom shot it should open uh, a page where you should be able to see me and David currently at least um, it's, it's, it's fairly simple uh, basically writes an uh, image to a uh, canvas and then takes the data from the canvas and sends it to, to all peers. So uh, it's a very simple demo. It seems to, uh, it's not too bad, actually. Is, cool. Uh, is this video, is this like screenshots and then you send as files? Uh, yeah, what is the data format? And like, is it using PubSub? Is it using like a direct stream? So it is, uh, as I said before, it's just taking the, the video from the, from the camera, writes it to our canvas, and then takes the bitmap uh, data from the canvas and sends it in a direct stream to the peers. So this has a few limitations, I guess, like uh, the data is not gonna be shared between peers, which is kind of awful. Right now, it's not sending a hash of the image data, which would be a, a fairly simple optimization to make. Do you want to, for the recording, do you want to share your screen so people can see it working? Yeah, you know that. That would be a, a screen and a screen and a screen. Let's see. So right now, no. it's pre pretty much using just the peer to peer. Like, it yeah. might be creating IPFS nodes, but like, it's not using any property of files to transfer anything. 
Yeah, not really. So one option could be to just send a hash instead of adding to IPFS on every frame. Yeah, so stuff, you skip them if you get behind. Oh, uh, yeah. That's an interesting idea. Maybe you could uh, open up an issue in the repository and describe. That would be interesting to see. And yeah, that's my, my short demo. Anyone have any other questions? Matt. When are you going to clone chat roulette? Uh, yeah, not sure we want to do that. Uh, no, but I, I, I actually found We would to like to have a plugin that can be printed by, for example, as well, for Mozilla's talk, talk JS and stuff like that. I don't know. What's, uh, what's a fun experiment? So my connection just cut a little bit, so I didn't hear your answer to chat for it, Twitter. But, but I just wanted to say that like, actually having like the interplanetary roulette, because like we are all distributed, and like just any other people that are hacking on IPFS would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, yes. Specific. I, I don't think it would be too much. over peer to peer. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, it wouldn't be too difficult. It's basically just randomly peering to to people, right? Yeah. But they have commits on any of the IP fest repos or comments on the issues. <laughs> you can spin up and down the, the number of peers who you're playing roulette with. So like the same game mechanics of chat roulette, you don't have control over who you see next, all you can do is say next or not, but you can have more or less peers. So like it would be a nice, nice working example of a lot of peer-to-peer -peer principles. Are you, David, do you have ideas on, or, or Jeremy, but I think this more in David's camp of turning things like this into like having like peer-to-peer -peer video primitives? things like that, where that would be one in a giant toolbox of primitives that you could have. Of like a or video. Uh, yeah. But the video would be one example that you could just do in the same sense that, that the work around CRDTs and everything gives you a database. And then you can just give like, I just want a database. You yeah. can also like, no, I just want video, like make a make a peer to peer video connection. Yeah, absolutely. We, yeah, we can open just like a working group to make sure we get the primitives right. One thing that's happening here is that we are converting video into data and then moving the data and then moving back to video. And that's kind of like an inefficiency. Like if you are doing video, you actually just like want to stream video right away to make it work fast. But yet again, depends on the type of video. If you are doing a call, you definitely want to stream it right away to be fast. If you are doing a recording, you actually are creating the data. So and yeah, then you want to move it as a file. So opening a research, I don't know, peer-to-peer -peer video can be a, actually a very interesting endeavor to, to, to do. Like, a, I'm sure a lot of people uh, would be interested in that. Cool. Yeah. I'm happy to create a repo and like start some discussion if people want to, to join. I was just looking, oh, okay. So we'll get a demo in October of a YouTube like app targeting video. Sweet. Cool stuff. Uh, all right. I think looking at the notes again. Ah, Jeremy has the Git plugin he wants to demo as well. It's probably been shown before, but I figured it's pr still pretty cool. And I was playing around with it yesterday. And this is something you can do in 0411. 
Um, so let me share my screen. So um, with, when you have 0.4.11, you have to build this from source, but you can do make uh, plugins, plugin, plugins, git, uh, so. And um, then if you move that into the IPFS plugins directory and restart IPFS, which I already have, um, you can do, you can pick some random Git repository, like maybe go IPLD Seabor, and you can push it to IPLD. And, oh, I broke my daemon. Oops. That's like that. Boom. And so it pushes it and into IPFS. So this is the root CID. So if you do that, you get a Git object. So this is what a Git object looks like inside of IPFS. It's got two different parents since it's a merge commit. Um, it's got the tree which points to the root of the files hash. Um, I could do like, you know, slash parents slash zero. And that gets me one of the commits that was merged. Um, the other thing I can do is, oops, um, let me get back this. So, so if I do a git log, I can see this hash. This is just a regular git hash. And I can do git clone IPLD that hash. Um, let me actually CD somewhere first. Uh, git clone IPLD that hash. And if we CD into that, you can see we have our files and we have a git log just like normal and all of this was pulled through my IPFS daemon. And you could use this to transfer git repos to other people or clone git out of just the amorphous wherever IPFS happens to have this thing. Um, it's still a little bit slow, which is why I didn't demo pushing Go IPFS because Go IPFS is massive. Um, and so there's some optimizations being made there, but it's pretty, pretty fun thing to play with. Any, uh, any questions? So is there anyone working on, um, the extra layer of integrating with the Git porcelain so that, so that you can treat, you can treat a repo that's, that's on, that's on IPFS by IPLD, treat it just as a remote that has a current head. So using something like IPNS, or if IPNS is not fast enough, then something else, but IPNS seems like the right point of integration. So, yeah. so the, you know, something that's asserting, this is the current head of that, of that Git repo, which exists in the sort of hypothetical IPFS space. Yeah, um, that would be pretty cool. Uh, we don't have that yet. Nobody's working on that right now. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, we, we, we got the plugin working and makes a, a fun demo. But other than that, it's, we haven't, we've, we've been focused on other yeah. performance things. Cool. But yeah, if anybody's interested, um, definitely give it a try. It's pretty fun. Do we have any like written uh, documentation on this plugin? Um, yes, I believe in the plugins directory, as well as Herman wrote up a whole bunch of uh, docs around how to use plugins. And so Herman's docs are actually pretty good. So. That's yeah, there's there's a small hack if you want to do it in OSX in order to avoid using virtual machines or containers. Yeah. Uh, so I was thinking about documentation for the Git plugin specifically, and not the the Go IPFS plugins in general. Oh, okay. Not the generalized plugins. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything specifically for the Git 
one yet. Good point. Like what you can do with it once you have it installed. Sort of. Yeah, and how yeah. to use it in general. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get that. Um, uh, uh, most of the magic is a Git helper plugin uh, called Git Remote IPLD. And so you have to install that binary and then Git will use it when you try to push to IPLD something. All right, do we have any other, other questions? All right, it seems that that's the, the end of all our hands. If anyone has anything else to bring up, that will be the moment before we all leave. All right, fair enough. All right, so that's it then. The person who is recording will stop recording. And you're all free to go.